Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're so glad to welcome you to our community tonight. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and distributed live stream. By entering this virtual meeting room, you give your consent to be recorded and distributed by Simeon Moore Public Speaking Presentations. Be on live with Simeon Moore and other third parties. If you prefer to not be recorded, please turn off your camera and or microphone and or go to the LinkedIn live video feed, the link to which I will now place in the chat room. For a better experience, please turn off your microphone and set your video to gallery view. This show thrives on participant contributions and all participants are encouraged to actively participate in this webinar by asking questions and making comments. To do so, please either write in the chat room, raise your hand or turn on your microphone and say hi, I'll be delighted to include your perspective in the conversation. Tonight, our featured guest is Julia Bushkova, professor of violin at University of North Texas and creator of the YouTube channel Violin Class, the subscribers to which number 43,000. Hello, this is Julia Bushkova. <laughs> Welcome, Julia. Thank you. Hello. Nice to see you, Himyan. So, Julia, tell us about this whole violin class idea. You're a renowned teacher all over the world for violin. You're a professor of violin at the University of North Texas, where you have people coming from all over the place to, to live in Denton, Texas, and study with you. Um, you decided to create an online course for violin, a video selection. People, most people in classical music, I had imagined, would really be uh, against that idea. They really, they're not technological people. They don't, uh, they really, they like, you know, the piano is about as complicated of a keyboard as they like to use. So where did this all come from? Well, actually, it didn't come from desire to start a channel. You know, I was uh, uh, subscribed to YouTube like everybody else early on. I don't remember 2006, six, seven, But then, of course, I was just watching YouTube once in a while for entertainment. Um, but um, so the my, what happened to be my channel eventually started from my former students who uh, begged me to record a video for them of how I teach wrist vibrato, okay? So, and why wrist vibrato is because most, uh, uh, I, I would say probably most uh, teachers or just students learn vibrato sort of haphazardly in a way. Uh, not that the teachers teach haphazardly, but the students learn haphazardly. Um, and most of vibrato that I've seen would be what we call arm vibrato, which is really forearm vibrato, okay? So wrist vibrato is much more versatile. It's just a better type of vibrato or in combination with the, with the arm and so on. Uh, but it is much more stickier, you know, longer process to teach. So many people don't do it and I do it and there, and I actually add it to arm if they come with the arm vibrato and so on. So anyway, my former students really wanted me to put it. One of them actually went through this method with me, fixed your vibrato completely. And the other one, I believe already had a nice vibrato, but she learned it when she was a little child and she didn't know how to teach it. 
So I recorded this video uh, and at, at that video, I kind of thought, okay, well, if it's on YouTube, it will be unlisted on YouTube. It would be just given with a link back then. You know, so, okay, so I would pretend like I'm, it's a, it's a channel you know, or something, but it was unlisted for a long time. So we posted it in 2017 and it was unlisted for probably almost a year. And I was just sending it to those students, or former students of mine or colleagues who asked. And so at one point, one of my students said, why is it unlisted? I just noticed I you know, wanted to share it with my students. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I just didn't think it would be very interesting. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big video. It's 17 minutes with the whole method explained. It's nothing flashy, like, you know, for short attention spans. No, it's a real thing. So, but uh, I did go ahead and make it listed and it uh, suddenly started taking off. So, and after that, it was clear, oh, people actually are interested. So what else is, uh, in, in my opinion, was in dire need of clarification for many people. And I decided, okay, it would be, I'm not sure exactly, actually it was shifting, like the elemental shifting, elementary, or the bow hand, like, and I, I know that the bow hand, the bits and pieces, it's called, uh, that was very close to the beginning, because I just know that there's so much misconception with the bow hand. Anyhow, so basically, that's how it started. At first, I was posting not regularly at all. Uh, and even to this day, I don't post as regularly as some people who really make it a business you know, to do it on YouTube. I don't do it as a business. I do that because I share my expertise. And now it turned out, um, it turned out to be a valuable resource uh, from for many standpoints. Um, and then basically what I do, I, I just teach, I explain things the way I usually explain them. Um, the videos are pretty much straightforward. They're just down to the point. Um, and it took off, especially during COVID, of course. I think we saw during COVID um, shutdown, lockdown, that uh, there was enormous interest in teaching videos of all sorts, of all kinds, including the violin. And many people, many adults started or restarted playing violin uh, during the shutdown. Um, so that, that was another thing, in addition to those who are already playing, students who are in progress and just looking for more information, clarification, uh, you know. So yes, that's how it pretty much happened and took off uh, really during COVID. I remember just recently looking at one of my videos, preparing for this, <laughs> for our meeting. I looked at one of the videos and comments, in comments, somebody said, I can't believe this video has only 13,000 subscribers. Why not more? You know, not, not video, but this channel, you know, it's a valuable channel. 13,000. So it was three years ago. In three years, it went 30,000 30, up. So wow. that's, yeah. Let's take a look at this video. Okay, oh, here we go. Wrist technique. The important is to catch the speed of your motion. For instance, my motion is da 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 da. So I will go to the metronome and I will try to catch that speed. And I happen to be, it looks like around 96 right now. In fact, no, it feels a little slow. So I will go up and I am right now. I'm in around 99, but probably most likely for me, I'm at 100 and 101. So this is start point. For many uh, beginners, it will be slower because their knocking motion will be slower. Therefore, the beginning of the tempo will be slower. But whatever it is, we start with a metronome and we do exercises in this sort of manner. So right now I'm 104. <laughs> So you do it for, I don't know, 30 seconds. Uh, I don't want to do it more than a minute because I think it will be too much. It's an overload of uh, that kind of strange sound, very um, slidey, although it's very light. Uh, we keep advancing the metronome up. 
So we go from 104 to 106, let's say. The goal is not to feel the difference, not to feel that it's actually accelerating. So you do whatever f a little acceleration during one day, um, again, from 104, 104 to probably 112, you won't notice much difference. If the movement is correct, you just keep going. But I would stop there. Next day, I will start a little bit under that tempo. Hi, everyone. Mark Barden here at Sandy Hook Promise. <laughs> wow. So that is really a, a fun way of learning to do something. And I, I mean, uh, you think about violinists as being incredibly high stress people. Uh, I mean, violin performance is incredibly stressful. And you're doing something, I mean, that, uh, I mean, anybody could do this. I mean, that sounds, uh, that sounds great. And I mean, it's that weird sound, as you said, it's <laughs> only do it for a little while so you don't get used to it. So Julia, it, uh, that is an entire me method that you published online. And one of the great comments that you received, uh, I believe uh, well-merited was, quote, intelligent, authoritative, demolishes some common myths and sidesteps some of the unnecessary complexities you find with other approaches. Vibrato is a true test of a teacher because it is such an awkward motion on the fiddle. Follow this approach and you should have a sound foundation, end quote. So, Julia, so is this, I mean, can you teach that that way because you're such an accomplished teacher? Or, I, I mean, I understand why the video would be so popular. Why is it so simple and why do we think the violin is so complicated? Well, I mean, violin is very complicated. It's a very unnatural instrument to play, as opposed to piano, for instance. Uh, well, yeah, cello or bass are more natural in a way of posture, at least. Uh, violin, viola are all slanted to the left, and yeah, it's a complicated thing. And of course, in all string instruments, the left hand does one type of movement. Um, and a little bit of this movement, you know, the moving of just the forearm, while the bow arm has the, is doing a completely different set of movements, and plus we have a stick in our hand, uh, the bow. Uh, so wielding that bow is a totally different, uh, a, you know, totally different coordination set. And, and the same thing is for the left hand. So to combine them is hard. No, violin is a really, really, really hard instrument. But that's the whole point. When I teach, uh, when I teach my students, obviously, and that's what I am doing uh, with this. That was a whole method, but not only that, but little other videos that I made for little different aspects of technique with the left hand or right hand. Everything is building blocks from very simple and then you put simple and another simple and another simple, and then you combine them and it becomes more complex. And eventually, just like math, uh, right? We start with simple formulas or no formulas, just arithmetics, and then we get to formulas and then they get very complicated. But if you understand the building blocks of it, then it keeps being simple. You just add the complexity on top of what you have already built. And so I believe that this is exactly the... the the key to success of teaching is uh, number one, doing it from simple, 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 simple. Now, you know, we got somewhere. And also the correct uh, sequence of the simples is very important, you know, because there can be a little simple piece right here and another simple piece right, piece right there. But no, you can't put those two together. They won't work. So some teachers do that, actually. They explain a little bit of that and then go explain something like that. Then there's this whole in, in between that hasn't been covered and students really supplement it with somehow usually with tension. You know, intention is our number one enemy of any performer. Intention is an enemy. So in order to avoid it, we do it this way. Also, in my teaching, I try to make a parallel between some movements that we do anyway already. Our body is doing, our hands are doing in real life. And therefore, for instance, in vibrato, I would say, you know, it's based on knocking, you know, because everybody knocked at some point. And so just to get that concept, it becomes, oh, okay, I can do it. And I can do it really easily. Now, there will be... Uh, 
pitfalls during the way when you have to trans transfer that movement to this or that or that, but you know, it's already doable because it has ground. It, gra it is ground in, grounded in reality of movement in everyday life movement. Okay. So Julia, so let's take a look now at some of the uh, other people who are also teaching online. I was incredibly surprised to learn that this is common today, that a violinist of all different kinds are doing this. I mean, uh, I remember speaking to other musicians, uh, even, even just 10 years ago, who were telling me, you know, if somebody teaches at the Juilliard School, they're not allowed to teach anybody else unless that person is studying at the Juilliard School. And yeah. then suddenly we have these uh, teachers or these famous artists who are supposed to have some kind of secret to performing, and they are now, I guess, giving them away so to say, or at least claiming to give them away on the internet. So let's take a look at, at this landscape. Here we have Itzhak Perlman, who is teaching a course for sale on masterclass.com. Says here, his first ever online class, virtual so violin player, Itzhak Perlman breaks down his techniques for improved practice, powerful performances. It says here, um, they're a Juilliard instructor, 15-time Grammy Award winner, brings his passion for teaching to a wide audience for the first time, learn fundamental techniques, practice strategies, and how to add richness and depth to your sound, give your most dynamic performance yet. And then we have uh, Maxim Vengerov, who is uh, giving a same kind of course as a 20 minute course, how to use choose bowings to help sustain a musical phrase. And uh, then we have uh, Ask Augustine, about when to go off score. I mean, so all of these different, all of these different teachers, bow grip, here's from an, an older one. Uh, so these are all multimedia approaches to teaching a violin to, I guess, uh, mainly an anonymous public. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, my thoughts on this uh, are uh, that uh, there are famous people, as you mentioned, the first three, like really famous, not to say that Nathan Cole is not famous enough, uh, but um, the three, the first one, you know, Perlman, you endorsed that channel quite much. Uh, well, it's paid channel, of course, because, you know, why not to make some more money? Uh, the other people uh, don't do paid, they do free lessons. Now, I before I comment on them, I would just like to comment actually that what you said before that Julia teachers were not allowed to teach, I find it extremely difficult to believe uh, that I think it was an urban myth. Uh, we're all allowed to teach whoever we like to teach outside Julia, the outside whatever, or inside, doesn't matter. So that's a myth. Um, Second is that there's no secrets. You know, this is one thing I that I really, I really dislike and um, dislike and dis despise because this is unnecessary uh, drama that certain people create about themselves, uh, claiming that there are some unbelievable secrets that only I know and study with me and you will know that secret. This is... Uh, if you pardon my French, it's complete BS. So there are no secrets to an analytical mind and the wealth of information that exists out there. There are absolutely no secrets to playing violin or playing piano or playing any instrument whatsoever. As long as you do a, but what, what, what it is there that you need to find the person, the teacher, who is really no nonsense teacher who will teach you, as I said, from basics, if you need the basics, or on a higher level from that point on. Okay. So that's what it is, what is there. Uh, so, in terms of uh, uh, the people that we mentioned, after the, there are many videos, uh, instructional videos on uh, online. And the ones that, uh, when you said that there's an older one, the Sussman House, Kurt Sussman House actually is a well-known pedagogue in Cincinnati. Uh, he studied with Dorothy DeLay and he was her assistant in Cincinnati Conservatory. So he's a real teacher. He's not a celebrity who is adding to their uh, celebrity name. I mean, I can assure you that what Ithak Perlman says 
or Vingirov says, it's not like a piece of wisdom that nobody else knows. No, it's all being done, but only they're doing like this a little bit here because they're great masters. And people will subscribe and watch it you know, with, with awe in their eyes just because all the celebrities talking to them. So how much they can get from a course like this or that, I have no idea. It's not my place to judge. But the point is, for instance, the videos by Sussman House are extremely useful. Uh, videos for by Professor V, It's uh, his name is Todd Ale. He uh, is a colleague of mine who also teaches in Texas down, down side, south. Um, he started doing those videos very early, very early, like in 2000, maybe 12 or or, or something like that, like earlier than I think anybody. And he has very uh, good uh, format, you know, very short videos for, for, for the short attention spans, perfect. Uh, mine are always more, more involved. Maybe I will go, maybe I will go in more details or maybe I just, you know, cover a little bit more ground, but his are really good videos. Um, Daniel Kurganov is a uh, new, a newcomer to the scene, but has a huge following by now and justly so. Uh, he has his own, uh, system by now of uh, also paid. I think there's also paid classes in addition to free ones. But this is, uh, these people are all now no nonsense, absolutely teachers. Um, who else was there? There's somebody just Augustin Hadalich. I really like his videos. Ask Augustin because again, I just like the he has a much more no nonsense approach and explanations there than some other celebrities. So, but there also is a lot of videos that, oh my gosh, I, I wish they could be stopped from being there. And, you know, and some of them, uh, some of them are, they have so many subscribers, some of those, the bad ones, the unprofessional ones. But again, I guess that's what it is. It's free internet. So whoever publishes whatever, uh, we can, we just... We'll, we'll watch that or and, not watch it. And Julia, before we go on to the uh, next uh, lesson, the next video lesson, so what makes then, when you say they're bad teachers out there, they're bad videos out there, what, what do you mean? That means that they don't put together the simple parts or they're, they're just, uh, they, they're not showing anything or what does that mean? Well, no, they're, they're showing, but they're showing a lot of incorrect ways of playing, for instance. I mean, in general, I would say if I were to, say something, I would say, unless of course people, you know, people sometimes play just for fun and they start for fun and that's all they want. And then of course, you know, be my guest, but there will be people who will be showing how to uh, hold the bow and it will be looking like this, you know, on screen, you're looking at this incredibly tense hand and then demonstration is like, okay, if you lift your pinky, your bow will go. And if you lift this with a bow will go, which, no, that's not how it works. And no, we should not have that looking hand, whatever at all, whoever you teach, beginner or advanced student. Of course, no advanced student will go. This is like, will be the first lesson or uh, videos that are uh, claiming, oh, learn violin in one hour. Learn a violin in one day. You know, just watch my videos and you will play violin in 30 days like a pro, you know, something like that. So those are really to be avoided because that's not so. It's not going to happen. Um, sometimes it's like like a, a person who offers violin and piano. Piano, violin, you know, the, well, you know, better to have a, a true professional there. Um, there's somebody who was showing uh, the working of the left hand is we know the left hand should look like this and, and work like this. And this person was showing, oh, the fourth finger is so short. So whenever you want to reach with the fourth finger, you just do this. So every time for the fourth finger, you go to this horrible position, which is physiologically harmful. You know, eh, well, that's online. And that person also has lots and lots and lots of subscribers. So the number of subscribers doesn't necessarily represent the quality of channel at all. Understood. Yeah. Let's take a look now at our next video. This is bow in the bow hand. How much you hold? Well, you hold exactly that much before it starts slipping out of your hand. Almost nothing. Sometimes I use the word skin touch. 
you cold it that much, just the way your skin touches the bow. And of course, when the bow is on the string, it's supported by the string. And so then you can release your hand here. And you can check all your fingers separately because none of them really hold the bow. And when you lift the bow off, and of course it's lifted by the fourth finger, the thinky um, for us, and that's the actual hold of the bow in the air. So I mean, it's it's like a like a meditation. I mean, it feels uh, as if we're out of outside of 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 time, outside of. The concerns we have it feels really really good to just uh, i mean and i even feel the bow in my hand and the string and i think just let it go <laughs> it, i mean it's 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 very it feels great from a, a, a viewer's point of view so that was uh commented there was a comment given to that video quote i almost gave up learning to play the violin until i found this video there are one thousands of videos showing and telling you how to bow and grip the bow but not like this one by following her instructions my pinky naturally stays on the bow and doesn't fall off i'm finally in all caps able to bow in a smooth relaxed motion with no tension at all the best part is I don't have that quote unquote dying cat sound anymore, exclamation point. Her instructional videos put all others to shame, end quote. So J Julia, tell us now again, when when you told me about this, what came to my mind was you work for a university. So mm -hmm. in universities, you know, there are the um, doctors of, of philosophy, who publish they do record they do rep um, uh, reports scholarly research in which they make a conversation of all the other people who have published about mm -hmm. something or all of the leading voices and then they make their own contribution but they can't do that until they can't write what they think until they kind of put together a synthesis of what the conversation is and the leading voices when i think about a conservatory i think about the opposite i think about one teacher never talking or staying as far away from the other teacher as possible. Nobody knows what the other musicians are doing and they don't want to share. They don't, they think about right and wrong. They don't think about, um, you know, a spectrum of how things are done. So would you consider this then scholarly research? Has your university said, wow, we really like your publications? Well, the university uh, officially, no. Actually, right now it's been discussed, I believe, or looked upon uh, to be considered to be a scholarly contribution in our field. So I know that there are several musicians who wrote uh, letters, uh, sort of like reviews, because of the whole thing about YouTube, of course, is it's basically entertainment medium. It was supposed to be. It's that's how it started, right? And um, it really doesn't provide what is called peer reviewed situations, right? And so, but um, I believe that those musicians who did write on my behalf, I should say, even though I didn't even necessarily ask them to do this, they were just teachers. There would be teachers and teachers also in the other universities or private teachers of very high caliber. Um, they differentiate between what I do and the entertainment channels. You know, so yeah, they would they they, they wrote just appreciation kind of uh, appreciation letters uh, and emphasizing that these are master classes. Really, that there are some 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 small ones, some larger ones, um, where the full teaching concept is being presented and it's on high level and it's useful. So, university wise, I I don't really. Yeah, I mean, I submitted to my university as a part of my annual. We have to, to do annual annual self reports, um, but the point, the good point for university is that I'm getting students, actually university students, who are applying to our place because they saw me online because they know how I teach, and in in fact, yes, there's much greater reach for me in terms of the audiences that I reach, um, and. You know, some I, I teach several teachers right now all over the world um, in different countries. Uh, some in Italy, some in Germany, some in India, as far as India, um, and students in different countries. 
uh, different states, of course, as well. So that is where Zoom comes very handy. Uh, so yeah, there's this global reach for sure. And so I think university is pretty happy that more and more people are coming and applying I imagine. Uh, to UMT. Yeah. Fantastic. So Julie, we have a question by Thor Sigurdsson. Have you heard of Trala, the company that only provides online lessons that is promoted by Joshua Bell? No. Um, and Mr. Hi, Mr. Sigurdsson. Hi. Hi. Can I can I speak about it? I don't want to take a lot of time, but I I'm an entrepreneur. I, in addition to being a cellist, I also have a business degree, and I, I I'm interested in entrepreneurship. And so I was very interested about Trala. So I just took one month of lessons because it was half price. And I was just shocked to find that there's this company, T-R-A-L-A, that is in Chicago. And the only product they provide is online violin lessons. That's their only product. It's just shocking to me. But they have over 100,000 clients worldwide. And they are just, if you watch the video on YouTube of Josh Bell, talking about it you 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 really can't believe it you just can't believe it well, that, that so anyway i just wanted to make that that point that it, it, it's a it's a stunning uh and, and, a, and a lesson i've had i've had some violin lessons they're very average very mediocre they're not great they're just like you know basically anybody who feels like joining them i'm sure they get paid very very little and uh it just was a it was a shocking thing to me. I just want so I can take my comments offline. And Mr. Secret, can you tell us how was it the um, the interaction then? I mean, because these are so they're virtual lessons. Is that the same thing or is it? Yeah, it's Zoom. It's Zoom. It's all Zoom. No, there's no per, there's no in person lessons through Trala. It's all online, and they have tons of online resources. There's videos. There's all kinds of stuff that Trala through that they have an app, the Trala app. And so, um, unfortunately, I, I will have to, to sign off. I, I, I just wanted to pop on really quickly to ask that question, but I do have a lot, I have to teach a cello student right now, but I, I very much look forward to being in touch with both of you at some point offline. Well, thank you very much for coming thank by you. and sharing comments. Well, thank by. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank I look you. forward to hearing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Julia, so we had, um, so that's similar so, to, tell me. Yeah. So this, this is one, I mean, I haven't heard about this particular platform or this particular uh, endeavor, business endeavor, uh, but obviously it's out there and obviously we just heard the very heartfelt endorsement of it. There are a few, quite a few of those teaching platforms out there and they're actually kind of multiplying uh, lately. Uh, so that's why I wouldn't know, not because I don't respect Joshua Bell and not because of anything specifically, but I, yeah, there's just too many. Uh, there were uh, quite, uh, there is one that has been established for a long, long time ago also, and the uh, owner, woman violinist there who leads it also is, there are lots of courses, there are little, little handouts that she provides all through Zoom, I, I would imagine, so it's partially pre-recorded lessons, and also she does one-on-one -on -one lessons, so it is all there. There are lots and lots and lots of resources right now. Uh, the question would be, again, I'm not trying to compete with anybody trying to prove that uh, my, mine are better, you know, or, and in fact, mine are supplemental for sure. I do not teach a course. I share a very high level, very high level uh, uh, bits and uh, advices and in something that you can improve your playing uh on that particular aspect or that aspect or that subject and, and so on. That's what basically my thing is. Um, I'm not there to create a course. Usually those people who don't necessarily teach anywhere like you know, Mr. Bell or some others, uh, people who, whose business it is, they make money, you know? I don't make money from teaching those lessons. I suppose YouTube makes money probably by now. <laughs> Everything has commercials, you know, those little ads. But uh, I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it for sharing information. Okay. Let's, before we go on our next conversation, let's take a look at the Milstein, Milstein uh, techniques video. Hello. 
Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today I'm going to show you a very cool and useful exercise for the left hand. Um, it is a multi-purpose exercise, and you will see in a moment what it does. Uh, number one goal of it is to strengthen the pinky. So, um, as we all know, uh, a lot of, especially younger students, uh, play with the fourth finger, the pinky, that goes on the string in this manner. Of course, we're talking about double-jointed people. So, that is probably very familiar to many of you. Uh, if you want to get rid of it, uh, you can. And this exercise is a really fantastic shortcut to a really nice, and what I call, supported pinky, which will function as it's supposed to from the base joint and not like in this shape, it has to function up mostly because it a lot of times cannot even go back. It gets sort of stuck in there in that position. Um, I call this exercise a Milstein exercise. Uh, the reason for that is uh, very simple. I learned uh, about it from a former student of Nathan Milstein many, many years ago. But later, I also found out that some people, uh, some teachers in Russia used it. Somehow, my teachers did not know about it, so I never learned it when I should have learned it when I was young and trying to get rid of my problem, because I had the same problem. Uh, and now only learned it later and started using it right away in my pedagogical practice. So here how it goes. Uh, mm -hmm. First, you will insert the violin between your index and second, what we call second finger, like right there. Then you will position your hand, not in what feels to you a first position, but what will feel to you as a second position, right there. Then you lower, so the violin is really there, so you can do it also without the shoulder is plenty fine, uh, because it's really supported on your collarbone and in the hand. The violin is very low, or your hand is very high, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, as you can see, I have a long thumb, but with any thumb, it will be quite high and visible, and that's where it's supposed to be. Uh, so then you lower your second finger, and then you can check, and that is a little too high, so here I landed almost on the D, uh, very sharp, and so we want to move the whole hand, not just the finger, but the whole hand, to the C sharp. Okay, so, so yeah. if, let's say, I was very low, again, I will do the same thing. I will move the whole hand into that, um, what to me would feel at this point as a second position. So, so that will be here. And again, you don't really need the bow. Uh, your second finger is here. Then you will put your third finger nearby to the D. And then, depending on how... Uh, how weak your fourth finger is. If it's very weak, you might want to put it on the E flat. If it's not as weak, you might want to try to put it on the E natural, but then you have to see that it doesn't mm. buckle at all. So just see, keep supported. On the E flat, it is supported by 99.9% .9 of all students. So again, let's look over this, the thumb. Okay, wow. So again, incredibly relaxing. I mean, uh, just a pleasure to view. So, Julia, now tell us what does th this digital learning, virtual learning, is it really effective? What kind of feedback have you had from the students? Now, I understand that. I mean, you've you've been extraordinary teacher, extraordinarily successful teacher mm -hmm. in the classroom for a long time now. Mm -hmm. What what is is all of this digital stuff? What does it mean if you can't actually control or 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 um, follow up on what the student is actually doing? Does it make any sense? Yes, uh, I understand the question. <laughs> well, there's a standpoint of the student um, and the teacher actually, and the two of them right here. Um, in general, digital learning or the violin is still will be kind of one-sided, of course. So, for instance, this Milstein exercise, as I call it, Milstein exercise, um, 
that is very effective. But as a teacher, for instance, I cannot, of course, check whether a student dutifully follows all my guidelines. So yes, I do explain everything very precisely. So if somebody is really, really meticulous and very attentive, and they would watch and then they go back a little bit and watch again and compare how their hand looks like they're in the mirror, uh, which is very useful, or like looking here as, and comparing to the mirror. So basically being very, very proactive and very meticulous and very attentive, then yes, they will get, uh, absolutely, they will get 100% result of it. And they will stick to the regimen that they prescribe, which is, we know, we all know, uh, it is very hard. You know, we all know a lot of self-help books which claim or actually not claim, but they teach people like to acquire better habits or whatever. Why 99.9% .9 of people don't get there even though they read the books is because they cannot follow through. And the same thing here. If somebody can follow through, if they're attentive and so on, and they will be able in this case you know, to fix their fourth finger, to, to, to un undo tension in their thumbs. So, um, but the drawback is, as again, I said, uh, very few people are capable of that. So with a real life, I would use this. I mean, I use the same exercise for people who, who have this kind of problematic fourth fingers or that, uh, which is physiologically not good, really. Besides the fact that it doesn't work very well in, well in technique, it's just physiologically not good. Um, so, I would have a student who comes and instead of you know doing it this way, I mean, they have wrist bent, even though it's not there or it's bent that way and they didn't notice. And of course, this is where I will help them to get to the correct position. It's, yeah, it's one-on-one -on -one attention. It needs to be there really for most people, absolutely most people, um, especially so it comes with aspects of anything of sound. You know, if mechanics of the left hand, you can kind of do just by observation and so on and, and observing yourself, the sound on Zoom, it's very hard or impossible to uh, know that your student out there, even when you teach one-on-one, -on -one, you don't know how they sound because the sound comes from, through the, you know, the digi digital media. So yeah, one-on-one -on -one lessons are absolutely indispensable anyway, if somebody is serious. Now, if somebody is also taking lessons and they do have one-on-one -on -one and they want help with certain aspects, yeah, that can be really the ticket to big improvement. But yeah, you cannot, un within our field, absolutely will not be able to have artificial intelligence uh, of any sort. <laughs> or digital uh, to replace a live person with live ears, you know, yeah. So in, in other words, as you said before, this is one part, this is a supplement to a healthy Correct. violin lifestyle and not just a, a miracle, something that does everything. Absolutely, and, and also that goes to um, the, the online learning platforms that do completely everything by Zoom. Yes, to some degree you can do it, but at some point, if somebody's really serious, they must have a live person, a lessons with a live person, absolutely. And that's what I suggest to many people who ask me for lessons. I am okay to give consultations. And some, some people I do teach like this, but ideally speaking to every one of them, I said, you have to also have private lessons in some, maybe not weekly, but you have to have access to somebody with live human ears. Fantastic. Let's take a look at the uh, next video, which is Holly Klein demonstrating a scale with arpeggio in four octaves. That sounds, that scares me. Wow, okay, and so that was one part. Let's see the, the next here. Oh, there's several. I mean, she, she plays all the double stops. 
you know yeah it's like that's what we did in russia wow let's let's see the next there's another i believe another uh excerpt here let's see this dotted rhythm hooked bowing Fantastic. Let's see then the uh, final part of this, sautillé. Sautillé. Well done, Polly Klein. <laughs> so uh, tell us, what, what, is it, what is this video in particular? So one of your, we have one of your students here. Yeah. Uh, how how mm -hmm. is that? Um, so, so what are we supposed to get out of this video? Well, this was a demo demonstration video of what we usually do with scales in Russia. Uh, first of all, uh, Polly there is presenting a four octave scale, you know, for you know those who know what the violin scales are. Most scales that are taught in this country, for instance, uh, and it's because Ivan Galamian, who is most popular, uh, or Carl Flesch, whose book is also very popular, uh, they just stayed with three octave scales, which is great. I mean, that's what we need to do this, of course. And most scales in, in violin will be in three octaves. That's how just the violin is arranged in terms of registers. But when you start from the very bottom note, like the very open string that which she does a G string, or in several pitches up through the B, B natural, you know, G, A flat, A, uh, B flat, and B natural, those scales in Russia, and not only in Russia, in Europe, I'm sure here too, there are teachers who do teach four octaves. So basically it's the whole span of the fingerboard and uh, it, it provides even more challenge uh, and therefore more fluidity for, it prepares very well for more like Paganini, uh, things by Paganini and upper, upper level of virtuosic technique. So yeah, so we do those scales in Russia and Polly basically demonstrates how we play our scales in the exams. In a that's methodically organized system. It used to be well, it used to be in Russia. I said, maybe now I still maybe it exists still. But when I grew up, that was done everywhere in the Soviet Union. I should say not only Russia, but you know Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan or uh, Georgia or any place. People were teaching things similarly because metho met met methodic approach was. Uh, the same and so yeah that's what we do so it's a whole scale with acceleration and all the arpeggios and then all the double stops you know there she's playing scales and thirds and six and octaves and this type and tens so which is here pretty much not done yeah and then the, all the bowings you know and she's she demonstrating that yeah so that that actually was a very popular video right away uh because people just suddenly see oh that's what that's the true benefit of the scale right there. And she is a virtuosic girl because she has done that sort of thing for from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, Julia, so, and tell us uh, as we conclude, so um, where where do you see these videos going? What, what do you see, um, what do you hope to get out of this? And what do you think it's going to be like in, in 10 years? What do you think? Are you going to keep making, making this compendium of, in other words, because it seems like it's a, a large encyclopedia of how to play the violin. Are you going to continue doing this? How, how do you see that? And how, um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, honestly, again, as, as I started this channel, I didn't start this as a business endeavor. I didn't start something that will grow into something. I basically just share what I do. Um, and therefore, honestly, I have not ever thought of what I will do with this in 10 years, because I think that's the question for those who approach, you know, the, what, what the, our caller uh, called the system, people when they make money. Uh, whether I would want to make money out of this, I don't know. Maybe when if I retire from university, maybe I will. Uh, do more of the system you know so far for instance on my channel you have I, I have playlists so people who want to find you know what they're interested in they can go by playlists and those organized but in other words um 
I did not, since I did not start it as a teaching platform or full comprehensive way I will teach somebody from scratch and up, you know, no, I didn't start like this. I wanted to help to provide aid to those who might have problems with this and that movement, uh, understanding of movement, understanding of mechanics, uh, the, the health of your body, because I have videos of, of all sorts, including, you know, I, I interviewed a doctor, somebody who specializes in, in hands for musicians, which is very, very useful. I wish people would watch more of those videos, but there are no nonsense. They're not entertainment. They're actually you know, uh, sharing in, in important information. So what I will do in 10 years, I have no idea with this. And uh, I will keep posting them. Right now, I post more of lessons. I started doing a little bit lessons, like I know to teach that with the student there. So perhaps I will pursue more of that, um, or just to keep addressing issues that people want to have help with. And Julia, so I know that uh, you come from a uh, renowned violinist family. What do you think uh, if your parents they would see? this, what you've put together, what would their thoughts be? Well, I mean, I believe that, um, let me see. Yeah, none of my parents actually ever watched that because they both died before any, but the first video was even there. Well, I would, I'm sure that my, my my mother was a teacher mostly. I mean, she, she was a great violinist, uh, soloist, performer, but she also taught in Moscow Conservatory for a million of years, <laughs> 40 years. Uh, I'm sure she'll she'll approve. I mean, th because what I do there is no difference from no different from what I would do in the classroom, and what I do in the classroom between me and my mother, I don't think we had um, any friction or disagreements because it's just again this is all solid analytical knowledge of what how things are in a violin. There are no secrets. Uh, it's the same thing for my father was never teaching. You know, he was playing. All his life, he was a member of orchestra, symphony orchestra, chamber orchestra. Then he was director of orchestras. I'm sure he would like it because it's helpful. It's helpful for, uh, you know, but again, I would not even think of necessarily asking my parents whether they like it or not. I mean, I'm not doing it for them. They know how to play. <laughs> I'm doing it for people who have problems. And Julia, last yeah. question then. Um... What, what has been the most satisfying for you? I know that you really, really, really like sharing knowledge. Tell me what, uh, tell me about an experience. I mean, we, we heard these stellar reviews. What for you has been, uh, can you give us any story about a nice interaction you had or what, when you thought really, this is great? Well, I have quite a few interactions. I think most uh, satisfying actually is that when people reach out to me and uh, especially teachers, you know, that probably was the most satisfying because I've done several webinars, seminars into different countries uh, based on this. Um, at some point I was doing several, uh, several, uh, I guess webinars, again, you can call them seminars, webinars with uh, Nicola Benedetti Foundation in England, um, as well as, uh, you know, schools in different countries, all, all for teachers. So it will be like, a, we call them uh, raising qualification, you know, in in Russian Soviet terms, it was called. Um, in, in some of these courses, actually, the teachers who participated, because the course would be like, you know, six hours or 12 hours, you know, in several days. So I would be teaching uh, several hours every day online and answering questions and showing, and the teachers would ask me specific questions and we will discuss things, you know, that sort of thing. So sometimes uh, those teachers who participated in their respective schools, they actually got a, um, you know, the category of teaching sort of was elevated after, you know, after participating, you know, uh, but that that is up to the system from where they come. Uh, so anyway, and then um, also the teachers who I actually still consult. I mean, I meet with some of them quite regularly. Sometimes they show me their students. Sometimes we just discuss, you know, how to teach this and this and that. And that's one on one. Um, and 
yeah it's a scheduled time separate times so i think this was this would be um the most satisfying uh, but also from some semi-professional or formerly professional or some teachers now who for instance with Risti Brato I was con contacted by a woman who uh, played all her life her, her, her children are professional musicians and she was professionally teaching also and then she kind of retired and then come back and she never had the Risti Brato and she told me that basically she acquired Risti Brato just by following that video and uh, we got to know each other. I was invited to her home in Massachusetts when I was teaching there in Vermont. So at one point, we just got actually acquainted uh, physically in real life. And that was because of that video and her success with it. Yeah. Wow. So let's see how we can stay in touch with Julia. Here is her YouTube channel. It's youtube.com at Violin Class USA. So of course, it's recommended that you subscribe. And yeah. Julia, uh, your website, um, is that a, the best place for people to reach out to you at bushkova.com? Yes, they um, can reach out and many people do through the website. Uh, also, the, uh, there's a Gmail address uh, attached, to my, uh, uh, attached to my channel, which is violinclassusa at gmail.com. So, people some people right there um and or through the website yeah those are the best in general and a lot of people still reach me just by googling my name and whatever comes there and that usually it's my unt.edu address which actually I don't check that often but nevertheless I still do check it once in a while so I think website and a direct email to violin class USA is the best Fantastic. So people should feel free to reach out to you with their questions. Of course. Yeah. Wonderful. Anytime. Thank you so much to Professor Julia Pushkova. Thank you for having me. So let's take a look at what's coming up next weekend. Pablo Solis, Music and Networks in Latin America. No, United States politicians would, no United States politician would ever admit that quote unquote, America continues south of the Rio Grande, yet American culture is heavily influenced by Latin America. Latin American lifestyles, cuisine, music and dance, fashion, etc., are already ingrained in class-crossing attributes of U.S. society. Now add in globalization and increased travel within both the U.S. and the Western Hemisphere, and it becomes obvious that tomorrow's dynamic of inter-American cultural exchange will respect neither geography nor political maps or agendas. Pablo Solis, a political scientist by training and former director of international cultural cooperation for the Mexican Ministry of Culture, has spent the last 20 years promoting music from Latin America. Today, he is the development manager for Latin America and Music Works International and coordinates the Cultural Connections Latin America's network. His work includes the international concert tours of prominent musicians from both South and North America, looking for building bridges and cross collaborations from all over America, the continent. Let's welcome him to our show and he will give us an insider's look at the quote unquote American music of tomorrow. As always, all information about upcoming shows may be found at www.simianmoro.com. Again, that is Pablo Solis, Music and Networks in Latin America next Wednesday. Again, thank you so much to Professor Julia Bushkova. Thank you to Agnieszka and Benoit Rivole for the support of this show and Victoria and Frederick Mulligan. Thanks most of all to you, our participants who make it all worthwhile. From New London, New Hampshire and Denton, Texas, goodbye and see you next week. <laughs>